and welcome to the Nutanix Tech Topics. My name is Bhavesh Vora. I'm an SR with Nutanix. Today I'm going to talk about link aggregation, which is also known as Ether Channel. There are two types of Ether Channels, static and dynamic. In this part, I'm going to cover about static Ether Channel, and in the next part, I'll cover the dynamic. Uh, so let's, let's look at how it is configured. All right, so we got an ESXi box um, on a Nutanix node. Um, typically, Nutanix nodes are supplied with uh, multiple uh, 10 gig interfaces, uh, typically two, can be more, and also multiple one gig interfaces. Um, and today I'm going to uh, show how we can uh, basically make an Ether channel with two 10 gig interfaces. So what is link aggregation? Link aggregation is basically bonding two or more physical network interfaces to form a single logical interface. Some of the benefits of doing this is increasing the available bandwidth as well as providing fault tolerance in case of one of the network interface goes down. So here is a Nutanix node running ESXi. In order to configure static ether channel, we need to use IP hash as the load balancing policy between the two active uplinks. So in this case, VMNIC2 and VMNIC3 will be an active uplink, and the load balancing policy will be IP hash. Also, on the upstream routing and switching device, we need to have a static port channel or static ether channel configured. So let's understand how IP hash works. Hash values derived from the source IP and the destination IP address, and depending on the hash value, one of the two uplink interfaces would be chosen for the egress traffic, and that's how the load balancing is achieved. Now let's take a look how this is all configured. So I've logged into one of these ESXi server here. Uh, let's take a look at its existing configuration. Uh, so let's click on the property of this virtual switch, uh, and as we can see here, it's configured as load balancing of port ID. You can click on edit here and click on NIC teaming and we can see that it is route based on port ID. Now this can be configured at the switch level or as an individual port group level. So now let's take a look at how it is looked from the command line. And N for networking and as we can see it is using as individual network card. All right, so now let's go ahead and configure this for IP hash. So minimize this and configure properties. I'm going to configure at the vSwitch level. But as I said, you can also do at the individual port group level. So right now, there are three network cards under standby and one active. So I'm going to enable IP hash. Okay, so as you notice, there is one yellow exclamation. And what it talks about is that you need to have uh, no standby adapters. You have to have either active or unused. So I'm going to move one of the network cards as active and remaining as standby. So as we notice, this, is, this has changed to IP hash. And since I have done at the switch level, you can notice that individual port groups are also set to IP hash. So now let's take a look at the command line. And see how it is changed to all. So now it is not treating individual interface as single interface. They are bonded together. So this is how we configure IP hash. Now, one thing to notice here is that you can either use thick client or you can use web client to configure. Also, you can use it standard switch or you can do the same thing on a distributed switch. Thanks for watching. I hope this was useful to you. Please stay tuned for part two of this series in which I'm going to talk about 
Dynamic Link Aggregation Protocol using LSCP. Have a nice day.